This video is going to talk about how to balance a chemical equation. And we balance chemical equations for the reason that we observe that the reactants that we begin with and the products that we finish with have equivalent mass, which tells us that the uh, materials that each of these things are made from are not appearing from nowhere and they're not disappearing through the process. So whatever I start with, those individual atoms, they should all be there in my written equation on the other hand side. That's what this balancing process is all about. But rather than just trying to make this look better, what can we use this information for? Well, when you balance a chemical equation, it tells you the ratio of these components here. So at what ratio will this and this work best? If you don't have the right proportions of your um, ingredients or your reactants, you'll get waste and waste can be costly. Also, the proportions will give you an indication of how much product you will make. So in some instances, your product might be a gas. And if you weren't expecting it, you may create a lot of gas and that could be damaging to the equipment that you may have. So you, mean, you need to have an idea of how much you're making. So let's get started with our balancing process. This is just a word summary of what I've already said. Actually, before I get to that second example, I'm going to do the first example. Here, I've got the combustion reaction between methane and oxygen to create carbon dioxide and water. And here we've got to make sure that um, all of the atoms are accounted for on the left and the right hand side. And to help uh, for you as a viewer to get a visual, I've drawn a dashed line right through the middle of the arrow sign. So you can see, uh, just focus on this side here, which is my uh, reactants, and this side here, which is the products. I've been doing these for a while, for many years, and I find that the way that I uh, consistently um, uh, balance these equations is when I actually use my fingers. So uh, if you're one of those very few individuals in the world who can do all these balances, balancing in their head, well done to you. But if you are one of the mere mortals like the rest of us, I highly encourage you to try and use my method here where you can use your fingers. Now there are other methods where you make little tables and, and write how many there are of each individual element. I find that takes more time than it's worth. So have a, have a go at doing it this way. So what I usually do is I put my finger on the, I work my way from left to right, and I put my finger on each element at a time. So here I've identified the carbon atom from the methane molecule here. And now I'm gonna go searching for it on the other hand side to see what's happened to it. So here I've got carbon on left and right, and I count, is there equivalent amounts of here as there are here? In this case, yes. This carbon atom is only one, and over here, there's only one. So that bit is balanced. That is just fine. We're going to balance one element at a time. We're going to go to the next element, hydrogen. There's four of them here on the left-hand side. I go looking for it here on the right-hand side. There's two. There's not enough. Four then becomes two. It's not enough. So we need to increase or at least account for where those hydrogens have gone. So we can't change the formula of water. You can't put H4O because if you change that formula, it actually becomes something completely different. For example, H2O, that's water. H3O plus, that's a hydronium ion, or that's what you find in acid. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, which is a, a bleaching agent. So these are all very chemically different. So you can't muck with the formula itself. You can only multiply the formula. So let's count again. So here we've got four hydrogens on the left. And now if I go two times the whole water molecule, two times two is four. So now I've got my hydrogens balanced. Let's go to the next element, oxygen. Here I've got two oxygen atoms. And now I've got to look at the whole entire right-hand side. I've got the two oxygens from the carbon dioxide, but also another two coming from the water molecule. Remember, there's now two water molecules, each carrying one oxygen. So two times one plus two more, that gives us four on this side and two on this side. What am I going to do to balance it? I'm going to double this entire oxygen molecule here. Now you might think that you're done at this point, and most students usually do. Uh, however, might I suggest that you double check. I usually go through uh, and test this process at least two or three times to make sure that I'm correct, especially once I lay down a big coefficient in front of something. It's kind of like one of those things where you do a balancing a seesaw. If it's killed, tilt it to one side too much and uh, you might sort of bulk up this side of the seesaw and you put it sometimes you can overcorrect and therefore you need to put more over this side and then you overcorrect and so this moving backwards and forwards to make sure you keep checking them over is so that you don't leave it offset so here we go once more time just a bit quicker one and one four and four 
4 and 4, we're done. So that's the combustion reaction completed. Let's go back to the other video, uh, example here that I was going to start. Hydrogen peroxide, breaking down to oxygen and water. Here we got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, that's fine. Go to the next element, two oxygens, two oxy no, three oxygens actually in total on the right hand side. So what do I do here? Well, the easiest piece of advice that I give to my students is that if you have an odd occasion where you've got um, two and you've got three, basically got odds and evens, yeah? It's much easier to balance something if both sides are even numbers. So do whatever it takes to make both sides an even number, then it's easy to go to the next step to make sure they're balanced. So this left-hand side, in terms of oxygen count, it's even, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. This right-hand side is odd. How can I make it even? Well, if I double the water molecule, I'm overcorrecting, but at least it makes it easier to move forward. So I'm gonna double, for now, I may need to change this number later, but for now, I'm gonna double the water molecule. So now I've got two oxygens on this side, and now I've got a total of four on the right-hand side. Now it's much easier to deal with. So I've got too much oxygen on the right-hand side. I need to double this molecule over here. So now I've got two times two. That gives me four oxygens on the, le on the left. I've got two plus two times two. That makes four on the right. So the oxygens are now balanced. But remember, we go through the process one more time because we may have gone too far to one side. So we've got two times two. That gives us four hydrogens on this side. Two times two, that's four hydrogens on the other side and it's all balanced. So we're done. Next one, we've got, uh, oh dear, I've mixed up my formulas here, I apologize. Let's skip this example. Sometimes you'll see a, a chemical equation which is uh, rather complica complicated looking and quite scary looking. And if you've got occasions like these where it looks like some of those components are unchanged, but they're just swapping partners, then it's easy to work with. So we're going to treat these ions, if you, don't want to, if you don't know what an ion is, you'll have to go further in the video series, but I can see that the chloride ion is unchanged. It's just swapping partners. And the hydroxide ion is also unchanged. It's just swapping partners. So I've color coded them to try, to try and see my, uh, keep my eye on it. And we're gonna use those to help us balance the equation. So for instance, how many ion atoms do I have here? One and one. It's fine. Chloride, there's three on the left and there's only one here. So to account for that, I need to multiply up the formula for sodium chloride to account for those three chloride ions that were there to begin with. Next, we go to the sodium. There's one here, but now there's three. So we put a big three in front of this formula. Now we look at the hydroxide ion. There's three lots of hydroxide on the left and there's also three lots of hydroxide on the right. This three is almost like a multiplier of whatever's in the middle. And that, we're done.